Hi, my name is Greg Chapman and I'm an agronomist. Welcome to this episode of Incredible Farmers. Today we're going to be talking about sweet potatoes in Bambaila, Bambaila, the growing of sweet potatoes. So, so let's assume that you want to plant one hectare of sweet potatoes. For that space, you're going to need 33,000 to 44,000 sweet potato vines. So for you to be able to achieve that much planting material, it's, it is wise for you to have your own seed bed. The advantages of having a seed bed is that it reduces your input cost. Your seed bed should be one meter wide and 20 meters long. One of the biggest problems in sweet potato farming in Zimbabwe is pongwe, the sweet potato weevil. Uh, that pest is problematic. And it has become a problem. Uh, and today we want to talk about how we can manage pongwe and kuneta kwakaita ne kushunguruta kwakaita ma farmers edu and how we can be better at sweet potato farming. Your crop is always in danger of insects and pests. For example, we have locusts, aphids, semi lupus and sting beetles. The solution is very simple. You use cabro. Dip your vines in cabro for 10 minutes, take them out, plant them, your problem is solved. Uh, cabro is also one of uh, the most important pe pesticides that we can use in sweet potato farming. It helps us to uh, control various vectors that can uh, bring uh, viruses into the crop. When we are talking about vectors, it's not to muka to go on a kuzo famba ne zirwele chichichunza mumbamba eradzebu. Examples of vectors include aphids, uh, grasshoppers, to know jamba jamba to get in our crop, and also white fly. Uh, these vectors carry uh, different viruses into our crop, and we can avoid this by spraying kabaru once every two weeks in our crop until we have reached the maturity level. There are four stages to the planting of sweet potato vines. Number one, you prepare your ridge, which are 30 centimeters high. After preparing your ridges, you mark your planting stations. Planting stations should be 30 centimeters apart. After marking your planting stations, then you plant your vines. Make sure that when you plant your vine, three nodes are in the soil, then you only leave two or one node on top of the soil. After doing that, water your vines. After watering your vines, drench them with chloropyrifos at 30 milliliters per station. Uh, planting sweet potatoes is very interesting, you know. Um, people recommend that you, the South Africans recommend that you plant in holes at 45 degrees. Uh, this works very well because if you've got a, long, a strong and long enough probe, you are able to get uh, two thirds, which is 20 centimeters into the ground and then leave the other top above the ground. Some people say that you should plant three nodes or two nodes or four nodes but that is neither here nor there because the different varieties of sweet potatoes have different internode distances. This is one of the methods of trying to determine what variety it is. The preferred method is to dig trenches and the sweet potato vines are cut at 30 centimeters. So you put them lying head to tail and you cover, cover uh, two-thirds of the plant. This assists in, in more production because what happens is wherever there is a node, you will get sweet potatoes growing at that point. And you'll still have enough uh, plant material on the surface to be able to have your required growth.
So moving on to the soil types in the climatic conditions that are perfect for sweet potato production, the soils they should be deep, fertile, and sandy loom, with a pH ranging between 4.5 to 7, meaning we should have a pH which is slightly acidic to neutral. If your pH is below 5, then you need to lime your soils first. Then the climatic conditions that are perfect for sweet potato, we need a, a rainfall that is 700 to 1,500 milliliters per year. But usually we want a, a minimum rainfall of 500 milliliters per year. That is the perfect. Then one blunder that farmers do, because they are told that sweet potatoes are drought tolerant, they tend not to take care of them in terms of watering. But actually sweet potatoes, they require a minimum of 500 milliliters to grow well. So when, when you know that you're in a region that doesn't reach 500 milliliters, you should supplement your, you should supplement your, 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 your rainfall with irrigation. Sweet potatoes, they are very susceptible to viruses. When they, are, when they are attacked or infected by viruses, we can actually lose up to 70% of our yield. Scouting, scouting, scouting. Varimi, ngati zizei kutichi fambe chichitari za munda medu. Kana chichitona nye ye scouting, tunobu wana kuyenza nisa. Ni masoja, muka itume nyike ino ye Zimbabwe. Masoja, ndi wano chichenge cheza, zuwane zuwa, varare, vachoro ni mashifte kutitenderera, vachitari sa vachoro chichaka chenge cheze ka ere, hapana wa ipi vangada kupinda ere, kutiva tikanga nisi. Ndizo zagafana na newe murimi, urimu soja we munda wako. Saka tunozo kuru zira kuti iwe, Feka combat yako upinde munda. Utari se kuti hapana ere shuruguda kuruisa munda wako. Hapana ma pests ni ma diseases za ruguda kupinda. Nekuti shuresha tango chora shakafana ni ma soja. Muka kunumbi za kuona varuguda kukuruisa imunu ito action nguva iripo. Newewa murimi uka kunumbi za kuona ma pests and diseases. Unuwana nguva ye kuma controla. Crops don't have an immune system. Mzasia na nemunu akaruwara anugona kupiwa mshonga and they can recover better. My crops are looking at about when it's zero. Kaka wanda kacho tika zinono kera haz upani se kuti amuki. So it's better to prevent than to cure. How do we control these pests and diseases? First, let's start with the viral diseases. To control the viral diseases, what we need to do is we must control the vectors, which is the aphid and the white fly. The white fly is responsible for transmitting what they call sweet potato chlorotic stunt virus and the aphid is responsible for transmitting the feather, the feathery mutu virus. So what you need to do is to control the aphids. We control the aphids using our cabra, using our lambda and also using our chloroperifers. That's what we'll be spraying in rotational. Then the other way to control these viruses is by using certified seed that you get from a certified supplier and also using resistant varieties. Uh, removing weeds is also important because weeds can act as alternative hosts. When we talk about alternative hosts, we are talking about when uh, vectors or pests or diseases move to uh, weeds whilst uh, our crop has been sprayed and then they come back to the crop once our chemicals have uh, expired. So to avoid this we need to remove all the weeds surrounding our field and in our field so that when we spray uh, pests don't have a place to run away to. Tunawanzo tizira muuswa unengwa katendereza minda yedu. 
Saka ngati bise izo zo ti maintain field hygiene ya kanaka sevarimi. The same way ya tino maintain hygiene ya muzimba zedu. Dizo zinodiwa muminda yedu for us to have a healthy good looking crop. The best way to control all the diseases in the place is to get the correct vines from a certified producer. Then you also get varieties which are resistant, which are fungal resistant or virus resistant and also bacterial resistant. One of the biggest problems in sweet potato farming in Zimbabwe is pongwe, the sweet potato weevil. Uh, that pest is problematic. And it has become a problem. Uh, and today we want to talk about how we can manage pongwe and edu. Pongwe, the sweet potato weevil. And you know, pongwe. Uh, sweet potato weevil, most haven't seen it or come across it but I uh, have seen the damage. Patino jika wakana kubika mbamba ila zedu, tinoona zine maburi mkati, and patino zisa mpoto, zino gona kuspo ila zime, zoto changa kubava, diyo effect ya pongwe yoyo wa jinji ndo pawa no isivira. But pa kuitari sa pongwe ya kafana na nechi pfukuto, chemuchi bagejia, they are both in the weevil family. Uh, to control pongwe using chemicals, uh, there are um, popular chemicals that are used. These include lambda, chlorpyrifos, and imidacloprid. I will start with uh, lambda. Lambda is sprayed uh, prior to planting. Uh, and then imidacloprid is used to soak the cuttings, maybe for five to ten minutes in, in water mixed with imidacloprid before we put the cuttings in the holes. We also spray, uh, on top of lambda, we also spray chlorpyrifos in the holes. And then a day after planting again, we come back with chlorpyrifos uh, to spray, uh, to prevent the entrance of the sweet potato weevil. And then after that, we continue with our chemical sprays every two weeks, alternating the three chemicals. So every month, we have two chemicals that we are going to spray fortnightly. Uh, the best way we can handle or control Pongwe is to start with cultural methods. The way that we are going to handle our fields, the way we are going to grow our crops and our ridges, and how we are going to cover them as the crop grows is one of the best ways. The, uh, covering all gaps and cracks in your field will avoid uh, the sweet potato weevil in getting in and laying eggs. Uh, cultural methods of dealing uh, with the sweet potato weevil pongwe uh, involve the traditional methods uh, that we already use uh, on the farm. Uh, one of the most uh, things to note is dry soils are easy for the sweet potato weevil to get through and lay its eggs. So one of the strategies is to keep the soils moist at all times when possible. Uh, the second method that we can use is re-ridging. Re-ridging also helps to cover cracks in the soils and prevent the sweet potato weevil from entering. Uh, this should be done frequently uh, to avoid the soils from uh, drying up and cracking up on top of uh, the moisture. Also, it is important to keep the area around the fields clear uh, of weeds. Uh, this is also important in cultural, in cultural management of uh, the sweet potato weevil and not create any areas where the weevils can hide and later get into our field. So field hygiene is important. Uh, amongst all this, it is also important to just keep uh, the soils free from uh, any other external material that is not related to our sweet potatoes. The second most important is uh, chemical control of, of Pongwe and uh, chemicals of interest include uh, lambda, chlorpyrifos and imidacloprid. If used well, these chemicals can help reduce losses that are caused by Pongwe by uh, around 95%. The first step that you have to do is soak your uh, cuttings in uh, imidacloprid Whilst you're at it, you have to spray chlorpyrifos in your holes that you're going to grow uh, your cuttings. And also, um, 
whilst you are doing that, you have to make sure that the chemicals you are using are from uh, legitimate sources and also are being diluted in reds that are adequate and follow, following the instructions. When mixing chemicals, follow instructions. Different chemicals come in different concentrations, therefore you cannot use the blanket uh, mixing red that you had from your friends or other farming friends or in farming groups. You have to follow what's written on the chemical. If you're not sure, you can always contact your agronomist Madumen Aripopakukubatsirai on those issues. We don't want any farmers burning their crops. Uh, well, the, the, the common mistake people get into when they do sweet potatoes is that they think it's, it's just a, an easy crop, it's a substitute for, for uh, bread and uh, mealy meal, you know, but it's, it's, it's a very difficult crop to grow properly, you know. People ask me what yields they are going to get from planting sweet potato. And I ask them, how long is a piece of string? Because it all depends on how much input you put into it and how well you have planted it. Then one blunder that farmers do, because they are told that sweet potatoes are drought tolerant, they tend not to take care of them in terms of watering. But actually sweet potatoes, they require a minimum of 500 milliliters to grow well. So when, when you know that you're in a region that doesn't reach 500 milliliters, supplement your, your rainfall with irrigation. Sweet potatoes, they are not all drought resistant. You might find one or two varieties that will handle the drought very well. But uh, without water, you have a great, great problem. We had a problem with our field where we were, we, we planted 20,000 vines. As soon, soon after we planted the vines, uh, the, our boreholes, solar panels were vandalized. So we actually had to water these things by bucket. This was a very daunting task. Don't even try to attempt, it's, it's murderous. To maintain a weed-free field is very important in sweet potato farming because weeds tend to compete for nutrients with your crop. To achieve this, uh, farmers can use modern day ways of controlling weeds like the use of herbicides. However, farmers can still do mechanical weeding. Uh, in chemical control of weeds, we mainly use herbicides like metalaclor and alaclor as pre-emergent herbicides. Uh, this means we use them before the weeds emerge. After the weeds have emerged, we can use herbicides like agile, and these should can be used anytime because they don't affect the, the, the sweet potato leaves. Just uh, it has to be 30 days before you harvest your sweet potatoes. Uh, I encourage farmers to read instructions and know more about chemicals about herbicides to avoid uh, burning their crops. Why is it important to control weeds in the field? Uh, firstly, weeds, they act as alternative hosts for uh, diseases and pests. Secondly, they compete uh, with, the, with the main crop uh, in terms of growth. You can start having vegetative growth at the expense of uh, your, your roots or your, or your bulbs because the crop will be competing as the plant population would have increased through uh, the weeds. And also, uh, they just help to maintain uh, field hygiene. 
Uh, field hygiene is important as well in the control of pests and diseases. And Zagati Kochera Babedek, which is Tungo Muka, Tungo Fambo Mumunda Medu, just taking a stroll in your field can have a big difference on how you are going to manage your crop in terms of pests and diseases. My name is Dr. Jacob Gusha. I'm an animal scientist, and we are here at Nyaga Sit, uh, Pigai, which is being managed by Miss uh, Letwina uh, Nyagano. We are here to do a series of uh, lectures or series, which we aim to try and stimulate the Zimbabwean community, young and old, to start this project. Also supposed to be uh, routine vaccinations, uh, routine cleaning with farm guard, routine cleaning with plaquicides uh, to try and treat uh, man manges and other things. You need to make sure that you don't uh, you don't venture into this production blind. That uh, the growth rate weekly, monthly growth rate. If you are going to be weighing, then you look at uh, the amount of feed consumed. That enables you to yes that appreciation of the cost that you are incurring. The issue of biosecurity is of paramount importance. You need to make sure that your pig stays are in a, a, in a closed environment. 